All right, Nick, here we go. Bottom nine. I don't know what this conversation's about. Um, I've been with it. We're live on X, by the way. I know you're going to be proud about that. You're going to be happy about that. So kudos, kudos to uh, me for making Nick Kirby happy. And then the second thing I was going to tell you is... Um, what am I getting... I just had my, my brain just got put in a pretzel because I was I heard myself back like uh, ten seconds in and it was ten seconds delay. Turns out it was just a Twitter preview, so that's good. I was a little concerned there. That was going to be a pretty tough show if I uh, if I had that reverb back in my ear ten seconds after I said it. Uh, but that's been handled. I don't know what's going on here. Can someone explain to me in the chat what's going on? I think there's some sticky substance thing. Oh but they're going to let him pitch, and they're making a note to the league. I thought I heard that. Okay. What the hell? So he's not thrown out of the game. <laughs> All right. We're, we're, we're still he's not thrown still... out of the game, but you might be, you know, looking at a suspension if they find whatever is um, okay. you know, well, like plausible or whatever. Whatever. Uh, how big of a suspension are we talking? Is it worth? I mean, it's, I think it was like 10 games for any 10 of them, games. 10 games. Yeah, I mean, I All right. It's, uh, they're not. They're not little cheapies. Well, then uh, Santillian will get his he'll get his opportunity after all. <laughs> <laughs> That's one. I, if he closes it. this game down, I'll worry about tomorrow. I'll worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm worried about right now. Right now. Love it. Trace is already in playoff mode. <laughs> yeah, I'm not worried. It. Yeah, we we take this one day at a time. <laughs> I got to pull up the chat. Yeah, I'm not looking at the chat. They're going to be ahead of me, and they will they will ruin all the fun. Good pitch. Oh, my yeah, gosh, Nice swing, man. big boy. Nice I'll swing, tell big you boy. What, what a night for Will Evan. Will Pinson would never. Will Pinson would never. Oh, here we go. I'll tell you what, man. Can't take these guys anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's had a tough night. I must say so myself. He's had a tough night. Tough couple seasons. Oh man, you're being a little you're being a little tough on. Me. I think you're being I'm a little feeling tough. Good. On I'm me. feeling good. I'm feeling good. That Ellie, was Ellie, 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 Ellie hit a back. double all the Nick's, way back. Nick's all the way 109, back. 109 off the bat. All the way back. Does that really do it for you? The one oh nine. If it was it like does. a it if does. he sawed one off down the left field line, got a double, you wouldn't you, it wouldn't do it for you either. I, I just wouldn't have checked stat guys. I just would in my head I would have said it was it was smoked. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Whatever. I just we just need to find a way to win a game. That's all. Yeah, I'm glad to see Brandon Marsh. He's he's getting a good opportunity here in the ninth inning in a yeah, three run well, they, game. They saved him. They saved yeah. him for the yeah. spot. <laughs> yeah, kudos to them. Bastards. I'm sure Philly uh, sports talk will be very kind to him about that. That's three of them. See ass down, boy. I'll tell you what, man. Let's go, maybe. Maybe that's just what you got to do in Cincinnati. You got to overreact sometimes. Get Diaz. Diaz was struggling. Get him out of there. Uh, maybe maybe it was a sick, sticky substance that was the problem. He didn't even need it after all. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie's punching guys out back there. I've seen that. Uh, that's a good receiving by Tyler Stevenson. I like that. The crazy thing, the crazy thing about uh, about YouTube now is this: is the, are these mid roll ads, bro? Yeah, like I mean, you can't not not monetize it, but like they, they should give you the option to be like, "Hey, I'm cool with taking like less money and not having ads run in the middle of our stream." Like it just popped up and it said, "If you'd like to pause ads for ten minutes during a pivotal moment in your stream, brother, the whole thing's pivotal." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not picking 10 minutes. You want me to pick 10 minutes when I want to make sure that nobody has an ad in front of their face? Come on. I tell you. Just run it, run it during uh, Reds MILB. I, I just don't understand it, man. I, 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 I guess at some point, 
you just turn you got to turn monetization off. You know, we're just going to lose all the money. Who needs that to run a business? Crazy. By the way, Chuck did a great job yesterday. I, I feel really terrible for him. Um, I, that's that's the worst spot to be in, and, and, and you could possibly be coming in to do a show. The whole fan base, well, not the whole of them, but seventy five percent of seventy five percent of the fan base is pissed off at either Ellie and or pissed off at the people that are mad at Ellie, and then they got twenty five percent that are mad that the Reds lost. It was just a bad situation. <laughs> it was it was a tough scene. Yeah, tough scenes for sure. Let's finish this off, Alexis. Come on, bud. That was like a little squib on the first baseline. Boy, I'll tell you what. I don't envy these guys one iota. Jet. Got a super? Over under. Brandon Marsh takes a shower tonight. I don't think so. That dude's hair is the most greasy, disgusting. I just I can't believe. Now, listen, I know he's a millionaire, but sometimes I wonder. If I were a woman, if I were a woman, how, how do you? I don't know how you find that attractive. I really don't. I, I'm, I'm looking at that guy's head, and I'm just like, what is he doing with his life? Well, maybe, just maybe, Rob Thompson was threatened. I'm not going to shower if you pinch it for me here. It's possible. I mean, yeah, I don't know what Rob Thompson. We'll get to him at some point, too. What is he doing? He's over there just Sleep making the no wheel. sense. I mean, you know how bad you got to F up to have John Sadak on your case? <laughs> pretty pretty bad. <laughs> oh. how, many, how many of these is going to foul off, man? Mer Merrifield. <laughs> Come on. Uh, Woody Allen, he's asking, how do they feel better in terrible wind conditions than they did yesterday? Because it's uh, as crazy as it sounds, it's baseball, man. Who knows? Really, there's no rhyme or reason to this game. That's a hit. Thought Bubba was fast. Yeah, he's he's fast, but he ain't that fast. <laughs> it's a good pitch, man. It's a good at bat by that guy. I like that camera replay they just shown right there. Good, that was that was big league by Bally's. Well, you know what I say in these situations, Nick. Just throw that damn thing right down the middle. See how far I can hit it. I'll, I'll take my chances. Atta, baby. Do it two more times. <clears throat> I've never seen a three-run homer with one guy on base. You know, that's that's where I'm at. That's what some are saying. All right, one Texas. more, baby. I'm not going to say it right now because I do believe in jinxes, and I know that me that makes me probably a an idiot. But I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it at some point. I'm going to say it at some point. That's caught, right? That's caught. You know who wouldn't have made that catch? Let's not go there, Nick. Let's be nice. Be nice, Nick. Take the higher road, Nick. Take the higher road, nope. Nick. Take no the chance. higher road. Take the higher road. I'll say it now. Alexis Diaz looked great. He looked great. In control, in command, throwing strikes, challenging guys. We got a show to do, gentlemen. Let's do it. Let's do a show.
This is Adam from Milwaukee. Hey, Adam, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Do you think Scott Hattenberg is a good player? Done up there with the bases loaded, the outfield deep and around toward right, and the 1-0 on the way to the plate. Swung on, long drive, right field, and this one's the last two that win. And a high drive, hit back into deep right field. Junior has just knocked the door down to the 500 club. De La Cruz is, oh my goodness, look at this kid run. My, oh my, that is a triple. Matt McClain's first big league bomb. Spencer Steer's first big league hit is a home run to straightaway center field. Joey Votto's done it again. The pitch, Votto swings high in the game. And I can't tell you how much it means to play in front of everyone here in Cincinnati as a Red. Uh, what a gift. What a tremendous gift. So thank you. Thank you. I think I can speak for all of Red's country. Joey Votto, thank you. All right, Nick, uh, this is a winning edition, a much-needed winning edition of Chatterbox Reds. So, there's that. I don't want to say it was a must-win because it really wasn't a must-win, but it felt like we were, we, were in the, we were a little turmoil as a Reds fandom, right? We had, uh, for lack of a better term, we had some controversy yesterday. And now we can all just sit back and relax and say we're two series in, two series wins. And more importantly, we have some guys on this team that are new that look great. Nick, I'll ask you, because I didn't get to ask you before we started the show, how are you doing? I'm doing great. That's a series win against the Philadelphia Phillies, uh, a team that's uh, projected to make the postseason by most people. Uh, Reds went in, took care of business. Uh, again, you know, Reds were on the verge of being one and two just a couple days ago, and you, you turn around and uh, find a way to get a couple wins. Tonight was a, a really well-played game. You're going up against Zach Wheeler, and you find a way to get it done. Uh, great win for the Reds, and you, you move along, get a day off, and come back home. No doubt. Uh, we got some super chats right off the top of the show that I'm going to get to because uh, because I'm I, I'm I'm – I got to be honest, hand up. This is on me. I'm going to take full responsibility. Ned also chimes in and says, time to put some money on Frankie Montas pitching in the All-Star game. Uh, we'll find out. I'm not going to try to overreact. That's my goal, and this show is not to overreact. So uh, that was a goal that I made before the show started, by the way. And then Michael Roth drops in and says, you guys look sad as hell for the Reds winning. I just watched literally a kid's show in 
Encanto, is that the word? Uh, but A-T-O-B-T-T-R, I think that stands for, and this one belongs to the Reds. Chats plus likes times Chatterbox Sports plus fun equals Reds win. That's a lot of math right there, and I don't do math well. But I want to say this. You know what? I was tired's not the right word to use, but it's been a relatively long day. I thought, you know, for 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 lack of a better term, they were going to maybe try to start this game. They ended up starting it late, Nick. Uh, it was a 1 o'clock start time, then it moved to 4, and then it moved to 8, and then they ultimately finally played at some point in that, t- in that eight, 8 o'clock time frame. And my only thing is this. We have to, I have to ask this basic question. How in the world? Is this true? I've seen that the reports are false. The reports are true. we got a big conspiracy theory. I hope our big Harding journalists, I'm talking to you, Gordo, I hope they get to the bottom of it out in Philly. Was there really a wedding that stopped them from just being able to play this game on their off day the next day? Or, or what, Nick? So I think I added to the, the story and the controversy here. Uh, so yesterday, I watched the, the TBS broadcast. Uh, I do like to watch the national broadcast when they're on uh, because you like to you know hear some different perspectives hear what they're saying and sometimes you get some interesting insight and last night I got some interesting insight they said that there was uh, the the Reds and Phillies both were off on Thursday yes. but there was a wedding at Citizens Bank Park and I tweeted that out today because I figured there probably wasn't a whole lot of Reds fans watching TBS. In fact, it's actually blacked out if you're in the Cincinnati market, so I know there wasn't a lot of Reds fans. I just thought it was interesting. Kind of blew up a little bit. And sure enough, like an hour later, I see the Phillies beat writer saying, this story is completely false. How crazy are people to say that? And I'm like, did I hear something? Like, was I like crazy last night? And sure enough, the power of the internet, someone found the video, and they literally said that last night. So either TBS got some bad information, or there's something fishy going on in Philadelphia. I think it's safe to say that they tried to hide behind the fact that they didn't know that uh, that the TBS broadcast or the TNT broadcast, I think it was TNT, uh, let the it's, cat out uh, of the bag. Uh, I, I'll correct you on that because I got corrected on that. Okay, so please. I, w- I love being corrected. No, well, I got corrected too, so I, I'm just I'm just making no. Sure I like being we, corrected. We want to bring facts only to That's this. Right. This, this, this is a no fact fake show. news. We don't do fake news. None of that around here. So. If you watch the game on the Turner Sports broadcast, it says TNT. So you think you're watching the game on TNT. Oh, In fact, I tweeted out something about TNT last night. But it's actually on TBS, but it has the TNT logo. I guess it's wow. TN- TNT Sports on TBS. Damn, it's real confusing. Know. I mean, between Michael Roth's math equation that you ju- that he just hit me with and whatever you just hit me with, there's a lot that went on right there. I'll just say this. If it was truly a wedding that stopped a Major League Baseball game, I want to meet the people that got married tomorrow. I want to know who they are, and congratulations to them for scheduling an April wedding in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and thinking that might perhaps not be a problem. We'll find out. Best of luck to them tomorrow. I looked up the weather. I hope it's inside. I'll leave it at that. All right. Uh, most people tune into the show because they like the Cincinnati Reds. They want to talk about Reds baseball. Let's do it. Box score recap, Nick. Take it away. I got to get a little cleaner on the uh, the, the intro there, but we're, we'll get there. We'll get there. All right. Okay. Three, hour 50, three hour, 55 minute rain delay after the game was already pushed back three hours. Some heavy winds caused a few adventures trying to catch some fly balls and pop ups in this one. Top of the third, Reds going up against Philly's ace, Zach Wheeler. And uh, Nick Martini reached on a fielding error by Bryson Stott. Uh, Jonathan India was hit by a pitch. And then Christian Encarnacion Strand smoked a double off the left field wall. Uh, 109 off the bat, 2 0 Cincinnati. Reds added on in the sixth. Jake Farrelly had a two out double. That brought Ellie De La Cruz to the plate. Uh, Elliott struck out on the previous two at bats versus Zach Wheeler. Some thinking he should have been uh, sat in this game, but no, Ellie smoked the double over the head of Nick Castellanos, 109 off the bat, putting the Reds up 3 0. And it was a big insurance run at the time. Because Frankie Matos, he was cruising through the first five innings. He did give up a solo home run to Kyle Schwarber in the uh, bottom of the sixth. Ball only went 360 feet out. Uh, then he might have run out, ran out of gas a little bit. He walked the final two batters he faced, leaving the bases loaded with two outs. Justin Wilson came in. Uh, got a weak pop-up to the third baseman, Candelario, to end the inning. Reds up 3-1. Frankie Montas's final line. Five and two-thirds innings pitched. Five hits, one run, three walks, five strikeouts. Reds added some insurance in the top of the ninth. A Spencer Steer uh, triple 
The Reds were able to bring him in. And then Lucas Sims, Fernando Cruz, and Alexis Diaz. Alexis Diaz to maybe a little bit of controversy uh, as there was maybe some sticky substance or something going on in the ninth. We're waiting for more on that. But they get the job done. Reds win 4-1. Reds have won both of their series. Now 4-2 and two on the season. One other quick note. Jamer Candelaria did leave the game in the middle of the eighth inning after possibly tweaking something after hitting a double. Uh, our deep drive of the day, Trace, was Jake Fraley's double on a line drive to center fielder Johan Rojas, 96-4 off the bat, furthest hit ball of the Reds of the night at 349 feet. And our deep drive of the day, as always, sponsored by Deep South Commodities. DSC is a leader in renewable commodities for biofuel production. They specialize in used cooking oil collection, aggregation, and sales. Visit www.deepsouthcommodities.com for more information. Thanks, as always, to our friends at DSC. Love that. Um, there's a lot to talk about. Uh, I think the, the most appropriate thing at the top of the show to talk about is Frankie Montas. Um, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect with him. I, I, if we're being completely honest, I don't think anybody in their right mind ha- had, a, had a clue of what exactly they were going to get. Right, you have a guy that really, quite frankly, didn't pitch at all last season. Yeah, I know someone's going to correct me and say he threw a couple innings, but for all intents and purposes, it's a fresh start. You don't know what you're going to get. And the thing that I take away mostly with Frankie is that he he reminds me a little bit of Graham Ashcraft in the sense of the, of the demeanor when they're on the mound and the tempo that they that they decide that they're going to throw with. And I I just uh, I give a lot of credit to him for having the confidence this quickly into a season to be able to just challenge guys. Now, tonight's a little unique. Um, and opening day wasn't a great lineup that he faced. So I'm not trying to cast some big net and say, okay, this guy's going to be you know, in, in the All-Star game and maybe he's going to get Cy Young votes. Nothing like that. I'm not going out on that limb tonight. But I, I just say to all the folks that were maybe you know somewhat concerned about this rotation not having a quote-unquote ace, so far, I can live with the five guys we're running a run out there. And, and, and maybe none of them are unbelievably great, but they are all guys that I think can beat anybody. I mean, Zach Wheeler just, I mean, face head up. And, and, and Wheeler threw the ball great, too. It wasn't like Wheeler had an off night. Wheeler threw the ball incredibly well, and the Reds just beat a good team. So that's something to, I don't want to say, you know, basically, I don't want to say reserve the, the postseason tickets yet, but I don't know how you feel about it, Nick, but I think I take away mostly just the demeanor in which he went to it, and I know that he threw on a very cold night, and I don't know how much that matters, but I just want to throw that asterisk in there. Yeah, you never know, like a, a night like tonight, usually it seems like it's more advantage of the pitchers, you know, hitters having to be delayed all day and, and, and all that kind of stuff, but remember Frankie Montas coming off a season when he was injured, so you're having a year where, uh, a, a day where his start got pushed back three hours, then it got pushed back almost four more hours. And that's certainly not something easy to deal with, especially a guy that's trying to get into a routine. He hasn't been in a starting pitching routine in almost two years. Yeah. So he was thrown off a little bit. This is a good lineup, whether it's whether the wind's blowing everywhere or not. Uh, Bryce Harper hit three home runs. Uh, you might remember against Cincinnati Reds the night before. And uh, Frankie Montas uh, pitched really well. I mean, really, the, the only blemish was... I think he might have ran out of gas a little bit, but you know, with the the long day of waiting around and not knowing if you're even going to pitch or not, I think you you give a little bit of pass on that. The home run to Schwarber was was uh you know good good for Schwarber, but it wasn't a it wasn't an upper deck home run at 360 feet, and then he he didn't really struggle at all. He only walked one batter the whole game up until the last two batters he faced, and that's what I love because he's he's pumping in strikes. Um, he's not letting the the opponents beat him. And uh, right now, I mean, you can't do much better than a uh, .77 ERA. So, uh, so far, so good. I'm excited to see this guy pitch again. He's fun to watch. Yeah, not only that, I'll, the last thing I'm going to add on Frankie here real fast is like he's been very pitch efficient. Um, yeah. Now, I know that they're towards the end. Um, I, I don't want to call it a broad, broadcaster jinx there, but I think Sadak asked Chris Welsh, uh, you know, what are you looking out of Frankie here? And I think he had mentioned, hey, we, I, I, if I'm David Bell, I hope he gets through the seventh. And it's like, hey, well, let's get out of the sixth. And he never actually ended up getting out of the sixth right when he had said that. But 
I, I don't I don't know if he ran out of gas as much as he's going to have to uh, kind of again adjust to 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 handling some of the nerves, some of not the nerves as much as maybe the adrenaline. Uh, it felt like he kind of got into some big spots there and just lost his command a little bit. And I think you could point towards maybe maybe he ran out of gas or maybe it was cold, but he threw the ball well in the cold the entire time. So I lean towards the latter of what I just mentioned, which is I think he just again it's been he's he hasn't thrown in a very long time. He's not been in situations that have got his adrenaline pumping. He's gonna have to figure out how to kind of handle that and 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 he will. And uh but the first couple of hits that he had, he, I don't know off the top of my head, he went, I don't know, almost, I want to say four innings there, and he only had, what, given up two hits, and two of the hits that he gave up were swinging bunts. So he threw the ball incredibly well, and, um, you know, some people might just say it's all because of the weather, but at the same time, he gave up one run. Zach Wheeler gave up a couple. Anytime you outduel Zach Wheeler, you did something right. So kudos to Frankie Montas. I think that's what I'm going to go with, by the way. Montas is the, is the, is the answer to the last name for me for the rest of the year. He's just, he's Frankie for me for, for now, yeah. uh, through eternity. But to your point, uh, he entered the sixth inning only at 77 pitches. So those first five, he was very pitch efficient. Uh, and, uh, the first two starts, he's, he's really, I think kind of shown that. And that's just really refreshing to see, especially again, I, I know I keep saying the point for guy that, didn't pitch all the last year to come out. You would expect more rust than you saw with him. And it feels like there's been no rust at all. That's exciting to see. Uh, I'm excited to see this guy. He's just, he's fun. He's fun to watch. He's uh he's a competitor. Uh, he, he's, he's just, uh, he's an interesting guy. I, I love his, his, his family, his kids. We saw the videos from opening day. Uh, his kid kind of giving him some shade. Yeah, it was okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just, uh, just a, a fun story. And uh, I, I uh, yeah, hope he has a great year, obviously. Yeah, no, selfishly, we all hope he has a great year. Um, moving into CES. I, I Listen, I guess all it took was him to get on the board because he's he's looked pretty good since. And um, the ball he hit, I don't know. I'm sure you have it. Not You don't need to pull it up immediately. But, I mean, he hit that ball relatively well. I don't know how hard it came off the bat. But, um, you know, for, for lack of a better term, you're starting to see the ball well. You have the you have the uh, exit velo on, on hand or no? Yeah, funny, funny enough, uh, CES's was 109.2, Ellie's was 109.1. Yeah, I mean, they, they were smashed. So, it, 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 listen, I don't think it's, I think it's safe to say, Jameer, Jameer being, and I don't know if this is on the rundown later, but Jameer possibly being hurt is just, I don't even really want to talk about it. Because at some point, I'm just going to go bang my head into a wall. I, it, the infield as a whole now is so valuable that I don't know if we really want to discuss it because it can become pretty depressing when you think about just how thin we are. I mean, we talked about maybe shame on us. I'll, I'll, we'll take, a, again, the, those that don't believe in jinxes are probably going to hate my guts here on this show, but I'm just saying, shame on us and our fan base a little bit by making fun of the fact that we signed Jamie Candelario and how we have all this depth, and they're like, oh, we're gonna, we have way too many infielders. Now I'm looking around my shoulder wondering, like, who's going to actually be next if somebody goes down? Um Hopefully he's okay. I'm not trying to suggest that he's not going to be okay, but um, CES is a guy that we're going to lean on for production, power production, especially in this lineup. Yeah, it was, it was just a big hit. I mean, Zach Wheeler's obviously a great pitcher, but yeah. if you look at Zach Wheeler's line at the end of the night, uh, he only gave up three hits, uh, walked only one batter and struck out 10. Uh, only gave up four hard hit balls. One of those was two CES. So that was just a, right. a huge, huge hit in, in that spot. Uh, and man, CES, he's just, his, uh, his ceiling's very high, but to, to Candelario, uh, it's almost crazy to say this, because I don't think a lot of people would have thought this uh, a couple months ago, but I feel like missing his defense might be bigger than anything else. Cause he's been very sure handed over there at third base. Looks like, uh, you know, he's going to make all the routine plays, which I know has been a, uh, a topic of discussion around town just a little bit, but his defense would be a really, really big loss for the reds. If he has to miss any time, hopefully it was just, you know, you know, the reds trying to be over uh, cautious in a, in a game where it's very cold outside, um, and it's not comfortable to be in. Say, hey, let's just get him out of the game, um, and, and we'll we'll move on. Uh, but yeah, you you do not want to, to this guy out of the lineup for sure. Uh, the, the one thing I want to add to, and I know they're professionals. I get it. They get they, they make not all of them don't make millions of dollars, but most of them make millions of dollars. I'm not here to to to, to throw a pity party for them. 
But tonight is not a night that many guys are going to want to be there. I mean, if we're being honest, it's it's a miserable existence to try to be out there and to gut through that. And I thought the Reds did a damn good job of battling at bats. And I and listen, Wheeler made some guys look foolish. I get it, but it didn't. It they could have they could have rolled over tonight and just been like it. You know, hey, listen, it is what it is. We got we're going against Wheeler, and they didn't do that. They battled. They found ways. They got some timely hits, and that's baseball in a nutshell. Is this the first game of the year where you felt like it was a normal game? Yeah, it, yeah, just it kind of like yeah. nothing crazy happened. Just no, a normal just baseball a, game. It's your nice four-one win. You know, it was yeah. not a lot of not a lot of stress at the end, which is nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Even Alexis Diaz, even even our guy Diaz was. Pretty as comfortable of a ninth inning as you could ever ask for. Are you kidding me? That's the uh, that, that that's 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 the top of the mountain. Uh, you yeah. know when Nick Carl talked about uh, peaks and valleys. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That's the peak. That's the peak right there with Alexis Diaz. And I'm not just dis- that's no disrespect to Alexis. That was fantastic. He threw the ball unbelievable well. We'll get to him in just a bit. Two guys that threw the ball incredibly well that I don't want to forget. Justin Wilson came into the game. Uh, he relieved Frankie Montaz, and he had a big spot in a guy that, you know, quite frankly, had to throw strikes. He had to be effective. Now, I know that Rob Thompson, he'll, he'll be up here in a minute. We'll talk about him. He decided to keep in uh, Brandon Marsh. For what reason? I don't know. We'll find out. I Maybe they'll ask him in the Philadelphia media. Maybe they won't, but I'm not sure what that decision Gordo's was about. On it. Gordo's he, on he, it. Gordo will be on it for sure uh, if they let him in over there. Who knows? But here's the thing about Here's the thing about it. You still have to make the pitch. You still have to throw strikes, Nick. I know that you can give credit and you could say, well, he's supposed to get him outs, lefty on lefty, this, that, and the other. Uh, Justin Wilson, a guy that hasn't had a lot of innings with this team, right? Um, I, I, I just said, and I tweeted it out, I believe this, and I'll say it straight to the camera's face. Justin Wilson, his family, if you're a part of Justin Wilson's family, you should be very proud of him. Very proud of him. You should send him a text and tell him how 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 proud you are that he was donning your family's name out there tonight in Philadelphia. So kudos to Justin Wilson. I don't want that to go unsaid. We'll get to Sims in a minute. But anything that you wanted to add about that situation and Wilson at all? Well, to your point with Justin Wilson, and uh, walks have maybe been the thing that's plagued him the most throughout his career. Last full season, he was over four walks per nine. When he, remember, he was a really good reliever with the Yankees, and then he kind of got bounced around. He was walking over five batters per nine innings in 2017 and 2018. So to come in in that spot, bases loaded. If he doesn't throw strikes there, we could be having an entirely different uh, postgame show right now. Uh, breaking news as well in the chat. Bryce chimes in and said that uh, David Bell just mentioned that uh, Candelario is not that concerned about the injury. So if you didn't hear it, I'll, I'll do it for you. Ready? Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we, we took out Candy just because, you know, he, he wasn't feeling good. It's a cold night out here. We want to make sure that he feels good tomorrow. And we got an off day tomorrow. We'll get him back. He'll be better than ever. So, you know, we're looking forward to it. Uh, Sims. If Sims. If Sims is on, let me think about this before I say it. If Sims is on, I think he's got, I think he's got, he's the best reliever we have. He's got to be on. That's a big if, and if some butts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a jolly good time. You can take that one and run with it. I don't copyright it. You can use it if you'd like. But my point is, is that if Sims is on, I trust him more than I trust anybody because his stuff is incredibly nasty. He's got heartbreaking stuff, and he's a dude. It just comes down to whether or not he's on. So kudos to him. That was a big spot. Him coming in, uh, Wilson coming in, getting that third out, and then Sims backing it up. And then obviously Cruz, I don't want to don't want to overlook him either. But point is, the bullpen as a whole did a hell of a job. Yeah, absolutely. Big Lucas Sims fan here. I uh, I agree with you 100 percent on that. Yeah. All right. Um, listen, we got a couple things going on right now. I got to be honest with you. I got to figure out the YouTube thing. I'll figure it out for you. Okay, I'll figure it out for you. Uh, I get the whole ad situation. I see you in the chat. I'm getting ads. I'm getting ads. I don't know what's going on. Okay, YouTube is doing their own thing. If I figure out how to fix it, I will. I didn't like it. I watched the show last night. I wasn't a big fan of it. But I do want to tell you about another app. And that's Game Time. If you've not downloaded the Game Time app, I need you to do so. One, because it's a good app. You can get tickets in two clicks. I've done it many, many times. You can click all-in pricing, and you don't have to worry about trying to figure out what the fees are at the end. Now, 
I know. Hey, Trace, the fees are just baked in. Okay, that's fine. I don't care. I just want to know what it is so I don't have, I don't get to the very end of my checkout after I put all my credit card information in there. And they're like, oh, oh by the way, there's service fees for 50%. No. You don't have to worry about that on the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app and you can use code CINCY. That's C-I-N-C-Y. And you can get $20 off your first purchase. And uh, it's also helping us out, which is great. We love you for it. Get down to the ballpark. Use the Game Time app. Uh, I did see someone say it is it is one hundred and fifty dollars, so you have to purchase one hundred fifty dollars. Take some friends, get a group to go. They'll all chip in, and then boom! You don't need to tell them. You just don't tell them. But your tickets probably going to end up being like free. That's how you do it. Just pro tip. All right, um, Rob Thompson. I don't know how much we've really we've really not talked about other managers a whole lot on this show. Almost never. In fact, I would say Rob Thompson is in a class of his own. Some would call it the elite of the elite. Some would call it the 1%. Rob Thompson was so terrible at his job tonight that I had to put him on the rundown. Nick, I don't know in his right mind what he was thinking. For those that don't know, Marsh was coming up to the plate. Lefty on lefty. Marsh was 0 for 1 in his career against Justin Wilson. 50 points. 50 point difference in his splits. He has a guy sitting on the bench. Uh, it was who was it? Who was sitting on the bench? Alec Bohm, a career 314 hitter with a 891 OPS against left handed pitching. That is over 532 plate appearances. Bases loaded. Bases loaded. And he could have brought in a guy. Like, I just don't understand it. There's no, there's no rationale. And, and listen, if I'm saying that, Nick, you know it's bad. Because I'm usually the guy that says, hey, let's ride the hot hand a little bit. And I'll be honest, I'm a guy that can learn a little bit. I can, I can step back and say, you know what? From time to time, I can say that maybe my, my gut or whatever stupid things for apps. Uh, Jake Fraley last year, I love Jake Fraley. But I was like, Jake Fraley's hot as can be. Let's at least let him, let, before we bring in Kevin Newman, let's at least see if, if, if maybe uh, he can figure it out. Fraley, that is. And... Oh, as the as the year went on, I started realizing, man, Jake Fraley just not all that hot from the left handed side. Maybe it isn't so bad to substitute. Maybe it isn't so bad to pinch hit. Tonight, Rob Thompson did us all a service. Uh, kudos to them. Kudos to him. Just a, a wild, wild move. Hey, you know what? You, 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 if you have your left handed batter and you're like, man, he's hot. Surefire way to uh, make him not be hot is to left him face a left handed batter. Should have left him hot. He'd be hot again the next time he faced a right-handed batter. It's a fair point. I mean, the more and more that that becomes a thing, the more and more I believe in it. Now, the only thing I'll tell you, the only thing I'll tell you before we do some NL Central scores is I probably don't have the time, and I do this all the time. I say I'm going to do something, and then I get busy, and I never do it. But I started, I, I was up till 2 a.m. last night, Nick, doing outs above average. I was up till 2 a.m. I was digging into these catch probabilities, trying to figure out the stat cast stuff on defensive metrics. And I got to be honest, I'm not sold 100%. But there are some of the things when you're batting 50 points left against a left-hander versus a right-hander, and there's a lefty in the game, and you got a right-handed opportunity to bring somebody in, I think that's pretty safe to say that's a good move. But Rob Thompson thought otherwise. Helped the Reds out. They went 4-1. to one. And uh, I was told, Nick... That this that this that this division was was not good. Now I know you can remind me. It's five games, right? We at six games now. We're at six games now. Six games. So I don't want to. I don't want to get overzealous. But this division appears to be a wagon. Yeah. Uh. Sorry. <laughs> you're locked in. You're putting the you're putting the scores in. That's all good. Listen, all I said was for those that uh, listen. This is like my wife not listening to a damn thing I said for five minutes. In fact, actually the opposite. If my wife will be talking to me and I'll be on my phone or doing something, she'll be talking to me for 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 every bit of two minutes and not a single thing that she said I I remember and or heard. And I know for a fact that there's many people in the chat and people that listen to this podcast that know exactly what the hell I just said and what I'm talking about. So you don't have to play dumb with me. Nick, now that you're now you're locked in, now that you're listening, I just said I think that maybe it might be too early to say this, but this division might just be a little bit of a wagon. There's no put it this way, I'll say this. There's no easy wins. There's no easy wins. I know that the West, I know the West has some gauntlet teams out there, but there's the Rockies, okay? And they stink. Stink. 
They are terrible. And I know that the East has some teams. We just played the Phillies. I get it. Uh, you could argue that maybe the, uh, there's other teams in that division that are pretty good, the Braves. But they also have the Nationals, and they stink. I don't think there's any easy wins in this in this division. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair point. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the Rockies look really bad. Hopefully they can uh, get one win tonight. They trail the Cubs 9-8 in the ninth inning. But everyone else in the division lost. Finally, the Pirates lost. Finally, the Brewers lost. The Cardinals lost. So, uh, yeah, I think I think this – I don't want to go overboard and say, yeah, this division's a lot better, you know. And, and I think the Reds are still fortunate to be in the NL Central. But I, I do think people saying it's just going to be easy because, you know, there's there's no Braves or Dodgers. That, that's probably also going uh, a, a little bit too far. But – you know, it's just nice to see the the Pirates and Brewers finally uh finally take a loss. Hopefully that that opens the the floodgates for more, for some more losses. Yeah, and there was a couple teams. I, I guess the Reds were fortunate enough to play the Nationals, so I can't I can't speak too highly on this. But there's a couple teams that got to play against some bad teams, so we'll see if ultimately how well it all holds up. Um, Reds M I L B, Nick, down on the farm. What do you got for us? Yeah, Reds MILB. Not a great night. Uh, the Bats lost to Gwinnett 7 to nothing. Uh, this will be our last post-game show with just the Bats. All the other affiliates start on Friday, so Friday night show. Uh, I'll really be getting to work. I'm going to have to get a lot of uh, headshots put in here. Uh, I'm going to be grinding on uh, on Friday. <laughs> but, uh, but Blake Dunn, uh, he was... Uh, one for three, did have a triple and a walk. Uh, the triple, 95-9 off the bat. Uh, Mike Ford was 0 for 4, did have two hearted balls. Uh, tough night for Resigns, 0 for 4 with two Ks. Sam Mole, he threw a perfect inning. He actually only needed uh, five pitches to record his three outs, Trace. Uh, but one slightly concerning thing is velocity still down about three miles per hour. It's been down, I think, in every uh, outing that he's had for Louisville. But good to see him have a little bit of success and in, in, uh, throwing strikes at least uh, tonight. Yasver Zuleta, uh, he's a guy that's really interesting. I did talk about a little bit on the podcast. Guy the Reds got off of waivers from the Blue Jays. Throws 100 miles an hour, throws very hard. Was really sharp at his first outing. I think he struck out the side. Uh, not so much tonight. 15 of his 27 pitches uh, were strikes, and he allowed four hard at balls. So a rough night for uh, Zuleta, uh, but hopefully he can uh, bounce back uh, from that. And Brett Kennedy got the start in this one. He went four innings. I gave up four earned runs. That's your Reds MILB report, Trace. I know you're shocked when I say this. I gave you a little bit of a break there so you can maybe, you know, try to help edit the podcast out. Good luck to you, brother, because I got some, we got some, we got some super chats we got to get to. Michael I usually, Rolf, I re, go ahead. I re record Red, I re record Reds MILB to make it smoother, so don't worry. We're good. Okay. Once we get to Reds MILB, it, it's all hell can break loose, man. Well, hell's breaking loose out here because Michael Roth is dropping $50 Super Chats like it's going out of style. He said, Trace, I'm looking forward to the Reds games through the ticket program you guys created. Is there a spreadsheet? There is a spreadsheet. I could have shared that with all of you, and I probably will do that. He said, I defer to others. Let you pick. Can I sneak Drew Garrison and Mark Fetters in with a case of garage beer without security noticing? You know what I want to know? This is my declaration. I don't ever go out on a limb all the time to say things or beg. I don't really want to come off as somebody that's like a, a take, 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 take guy. But you know what? I crack Pilsner's open on this show a lot. And you know what? I'm just going to say I'm open for business. And I'm not hard to please. If It might just be something where I got to get product. I'll just take free product. That's, that's, less, that's a little less money out of my pocket. Your boy needs some more Pilsner's for about 80, 82 more times. How many is that? Yeah, about 82, 83, 84 more times. Somewhere in there. That's the plan. Just throwing that out there. No free ads, but garage beer, I'm talking to you. All right. Um, there's other super chats I need to get to too as well, Nick, here. So let me just let me let me let me just get to them while I can here. Uh Big C, the Viking helmet man. He is a good friend of the program. He says can't spell Philadelphia without two L's. That is true. And the Big Red Machine said CES could become the next Tony Perez. Big doggy. I, I, listen, when you start to compare players to the Big Red Machine days, you're going to have some people that are hesitant to, to, to do that. And I understand why. 
I understand why. My only thing about CES is this. I think he's the best chance for a guy to hit 50 home runs in a season that we've had ever since the Big Red Machine. I think the last player to do, there's only been one player in the history, if I'm, if I, this is me throwing out some crazy stuff that I really probably shouldn't do live on the air without looking. But I think there's only been one guy that's, that's hit 50 home runs for this, club, this, for this franchise ever. Is that true? The chat will correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure, very, very quickly. That that is true, but Ewan Suarez did it forty nine. So okay, well, uh, I mean, listen, Nick. You know what? I got something to tell you about CES. You want you know what it is? Almost doesn't count, brother. It doesn't count. So what I'm gonna say is CES might be the only guy I think from here that that if you're right. Okay, I can't say that I can't say he's the only guy that that has a chance to do it when one guy was one home run away. To be fair, but all I'm saying is that CES. Of all of the guys that I've seen play in the, in the, in whatever to call it the last few years, he seems like a guy that I think will do it. I genuinely think he will do it. It's just a matter of time. Um, we shall see. Uh, Drew Garrison says, "Get with me, Trace. I'll make the connection." And then Mark Fetter says, "Michael Rolfe, will you adopt me?" <laughs> oh, we'll find out. And with that, let's get back to some Reds baseball. All right, chat. Here's the note. last thing I got for the chat. I want to let everybody know that watches the show. We love you as always. I don't want you to ever think that that uh, it goes unnoticed. These numbers that we are getting are record numbers, and it's all because of you. Um, we try to make the show fun. We try to make it entertaining. We do our best to be informative. We are two fans that, you know, Nick especially goes uh, over the deep end in regards to just trying to dive into making sure you're as prepared as possible. I'm the idiot that shows up and just says whatever. Um, but the thing is, is I do want you all to know that your boy hit the pause for the ads for 10 minutes. Now, I don't know how to reset it. I'm going to try my best. As soon as I see that t- that clock tick down to, to the to the to the to the tens somewhere in there, ten seconds, I'll hit it again. No guarantees that it'll work though. I'm doing my best to fight the big man. All right, I'm doing my best. But I just want to say, Nick, before we get to the next tomorrow starters, this was a this was, and I listen. It's one of one sixty two. All that. This felt like a game that a that a team that's not very good or an average team would never win. It's cold. You thought you were going to play three, four, five hours ago. You don't really want to be there, if we're being honest with you. It's absolutely disgusting outside. And you're playing against a good team that has their best arm on the mound. You don't win those games. You just don't. I really believe that. That, now I'm not suggesting for a single second that you, again, to go overboard. But I do feel confident and comfortable that we have a good team. Yeah, I mean... Th- you had said it earlier in the week. I, I don't remember if it was on here or on off the bench that, look, this is the kind of series you really just need to get one and you keep it moving. And if you get two, that's that's a, a a pretty big accomplishment, I think, for this team. I think this gives them some confidence. Hey, we went into Philadelphia. Uh, we had a, a rubber game against Zach Wheeler, and we got a win. We got a nice clean win, 4-1. Uh, yeah, this, this would have been an easy game. <laughs> You're there all day. You're flying back to Cincinnati whenever you get done with this game. Uh, you're kind of thinking about, you know, your flight back, what you're doing when you get off the plane. Uh, you know, some of the guys, when am I going to get home to the wife and kids, all that kind of stuff, and you got a big win. So uh, remember, I mean, if this team had started better last year and they were playing with a very subpar roster at the beginning of the year, but they would have started better at the end of the year, they would have been playing in the playoffs last year. Uh, so <laughs> these games all matter, and uh, just good to see them get off to that that start and hopefully they can carry a little bit of that momentum uh, coming back home. Hopefully they get some really good fan support too when they get back home. Uh, no doubt. Um, I reset the ad thing, but I guarantee I know people got hit by ads because I when I paused it, it says resume ads. And then when I hit it again, it then pauses the ads. So I'm sure as soon as I hit resume ads, YouTube wanted to make sure they could capitalize and they threw it all to the, they threw it, they threw it to everyone. So I'm going to do some research tonight. So tonight I'll be up till 2 a.m. trying to figure out how to stop YouTube ads. Last night I was up till 2 a.m. watching Mookie Betts uh, outs above average highlights. God honest truth. God's honest truth. There's some damning stuff, Nick. I'm going to show you. There's some damning stuff. That's StatCast, by the way. I don't know if they need to figure it out, but they need to figure out the wall situation. Don't know if you know that. You know that, right? The wall situation. The wall situation. Yeah, they don't factor in the walls for for outs above average in regard in, in regards to catch probability. They it kind of it's like kind of like an open field. So any ball that gets hit near a wall when a guy's like kind of jumping up against a wall 
or something along those lines, that doesn't get factored in at all. It's all, it's almost like basically it's an open field and they can just run back there and catch it. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but again, I don't, but go ahead. That's why some home runs have the 0. 0.09 expected batting average. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But again, not all, not, I'm not all the way out. I'm just trying to do my homework, I'm trying to do my research as they say. All right, they play again, uh, not tomorrow, correct, Nick? But they do play again. Friday, uh, going to have to renew that Apple TV Plus subscription <sighs> uh, that I canceled. Uh, yeah, something else to uh, watch the old Red Legs. But yeah, Red starting a series against the Mets on Friday night. Nice little homestand for the Reds. Mets are playing a doubleheader tomorrow in Detroit. So hopefully uh, they use every single pitcher on their staff uh, tomorrow. Uh, for the series, Friday, it'll be uh, Hunter Green going up against Jose Quintana. Saturday, Nick Martinez against Luis Severino. And then Sunday, Andrew Abbott against uh, Sean Manea. Uh, Jose Quintana, uh, this is his 13th career season, believe it or not. Thrown 1,800 career innings. Kind of really carved out a really solid career. 3.74 career array. Uh, only Scherzer, Grinky, Verlander, Kershaw, Bumgarner, and Cole have thrown more innings than Quintana since 2012. In his season debut, only went four and two-thirds innings, six hits, two runs against the Brewers. He's really dominated the Reds over his career. Career 3.03 ERA in 13 starts, even better below three in five starts at Great America Ballpark. Um, last year, he only allowed two runs over six and two-thirds uh, against the Reds at City Field. And then Hunter Green for the Reds. He's got a career 6.06 .06 ERA against the Mets. He's given up... Uh, Two home runs to Pete Alonzo, a home run to Harrison Bader, who's on the Mets, home run to Lindor, home run to Nemo, home run to Tyron Taylor, who I just learned is on the Mets uh, when I looked that stat up. Uh, so, yeah, uh, not a uh, team that Hunter's had a lot of success, but uh, I, I don't know, Trace, I, I felt like Hunter threw the ball pretty well um, in his first start. I'd like to see a little bit more, uh, but this is a really good opportunity for him to take the ball, chance to get the Reds to 5-2. To and two. Um, I'm excited to see him pitch uh, in front of the home crowd on Friday and on Apple TV+. Plus. Yeah, and I will say a couple nice things. A couple very nice things. For those that think I'm toxic, listen up. You ready? I think the Apple TV broadcasts look great. They look fantastic. Phenomenal. If you have a big screen TV, 4K perhaps, it's never going to look better. Now, the broadcasters, on the other hand, I won't go there because I'm saying nice things. But... But, I'm just saying, maybe they've changed. If they've changed, it looks like your eyes are telling me they've changed some broadcasters. I'll let you chime in. Go for it. What are they doing? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give some, some sources stuff here, too, as well. Oh, for you. man. So in, there in, comes in, Kirby with the Kirby Connections. So, so, first off, last year, Apple TV allowed you to choose the radio broadcast on your TV. So, you can just easily, you on your smart TV, you uh, uh, hit the down they button, did? I think, on like a Roku. Yeah, you can change it to... Uh, you could change it to the radio broadcast. So, and uh, I do know that Chris Welsh will be on the radio broadcast on Friday night. So, you have that option. Uh, that was an option all last year. All last year. Last year was the first year. Someone on Twitter did. It, uh, how, how do these things not? You found out on Twitter. I, Someone told you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I retweeted it. But yeah, you can. You can. Well, change I don't. The broadcast I don't. I don't think the, I follow you. That's the problem. Yeah. Have you muted? It's probably. Probably a good decision. That's a joke, by the way. Just to make sure. I don't want anybody thinking that this is, you know, a toxic relationship that we have. No. I love Nick. I love I like Nick so much that I that I poke fun at him. In fact, that's when you know that I like people, is that um I tried my best to get it out as fast as I can. It fell on deaf ears because I think that that stuff happened in the Reds game. But um but I tried to get that Luke Skywalker uh umpire card out there. It just took too long to get out. It was one of those things where I thought it was kind of funny. I wanted to at least I make might it. be I might make some enemies, but I'm not a Star Wars guy, and I kind of have like a, a vendetta Ooh. against Star Wars because my birthday is May, May 4th, and every uh. single freaking year I get the May the 4th be with you, and I'm like, I, 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 not, I, I don't have anything against Star Wars, but wow. it's just like, it's my day. I, I, don't want, I don't want this. I don't need this in my life. Have you watched Star Wars? Uh, no, and after the May the 4th be with you, it'll never happen. I'll never go back and do it again. Really? What if I could spin zone this a little bit? What if I said that you watch that and it became your it became your favorite franchise of all time, and you realized that it was it was God's way of saying that you should have watched that you should have watched that series 
and it and it and it basically was a blessing in your life. And for the rest of your life, you will think May the Fourth be with you is actually for you. What about that? What do you think about that spin zone? Oh no, Michael Rolf said you're dead to me. Mm. I just lost our I just lost our company <laughs> fight answer. <laughs> <laughs> this is worse than Connor Phillips game. No, I don't know about that. That was pretty tough. But you know what? We're going to battle through it. We're going to get through it all together. We're going to come as one. We're going to lock arms and we're going to walk through the we're going to walk through the valley of uh of 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 basically uh stones being thrown at us in the middle of the desert. But that's here nor there. We'll move on before we get ourselves in too much trouble on this show. Um I was going to say something else nice. I don't even remember what it was. Oh, I know what I was going to say. I know what I was going to say. For for those that are all talking about maybe, you know, being pessimistic from time to time. I don't think I'm trying. I, I pause sometimes when I say stuff, I, I'm saying some outlandish stuff. Cause I know people can clip it. I don't think that you could have asked this starting rotation to be any better, to be any better. I mean, you have five guys that have now one guy's gone out and thrown twice, but you have five guys that have gone all gone and thrown. I don't care what the stats say. I don't care what maybe someone says. Oh, it's not a quality start. They've all thrown the ball relatively well. We don't have a Luis Sessa. We don't have a Luke Weaver. We don't have. You're gonna have to help me here. We got like 90 of those guys last year. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to be demeaning to their families. But let's face it. There was about. 30 guys that threw last year that were starters. Um, we got to the point last year, you want to know how bad it got? We got so bad that we were out there throwing Derek Law as an opener, and we were fired up about it. We were fired up about it. We were like, hell yeah, we got Derek Law as an opener today. What do you think about that? That's how bad it got. This year, not trying to jinx it by any stretch of the imagination, but that is a huge upgrade. Huge upgrade. Yeah, there's no holes in this this rotation, and there's depth behind that rotation. We don't want to jinx anything. We, yeah. we well, at some point, the you, they're going to have but, a bad outing. But but no, but I'm just saying, you know, if if if, if God forbid some of these guys, you know, get get hurt, there's there's other arms to replace them that you're not going to feel like you're, you're going down to the, to AAA and you're bringing guys up that just have absolutely no business uh, ever making a big league start. So. Yeah, I think that's that's what if the Reds win the division this year, I think that's what wins them the division. I think their starting pitching depth is much better than any other team in this division, and I think they might wear some teams out uh, over the course of the year uh, when when they're having to really dip down much further than they want to, because inevitably it happens almost to every team outside of the 2020 12 Reds. Uh, I, I, every year you, you see it happen over and over again, where you just have to keep digging deeper and deeper and deeper. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. All right. Uh, Reds win four to one. You know what that means? It means it's a, uh, it's time for a couple things. It's time for a couple things. We all know what the, uh, we all know what the first thing is. And that is, go ahead, Nick. Go ahead. Bring the people what they want. Oh, oh I love, I love, I, my favorite thing about this is that you do this on a consistent basis. Oh, I, I, you I you had it right. right. I had it right. I overthought. Overthought. Sorry, Nick. First blunder of the year. There you go, folks. That was an excellent toss. That was an excellent toss. Um, but final parting thoughts for me is this, as always. You know, sometimes when you start things, you don't know where they're going to go. You don't know why you're doing it. You're not sure what exactly the end goal is. And I tell you this, and I mean this with the bottom of my heart. Um, it, take, it, took, it took a lot of hard work to get to where we're at. But at the same time, the motivation to keep going, to keep doing things, to keep putting time, effort, and energy into this show, to keep trying to, to make it entertaining, to, to make sure that there's a podcast every morning is is very, very much fueled by you. You think that's a joke? You think that we're trying to like be nice? But to God's honest truth, man, this is only possible because of the fuel that you guys inject in this show. And it's largely based off the, 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 the interactions we have in the chat, the OGs that we've seen here since day one, new people coming into this into this show and just finding out two guys that are sitting in their basement wondering how, who, who the hell are they and what are they talking about. They do It, it kind of looks like they have decent graphics, so maybe I'll stick around long enough to watch. And next thing you know, you fall in love because you why? Not because of us, but largely because we get to enjoy the Cincinnati Reds together. And that's the whole goal of what we're doing. 
So I just want to say again, thank you. Uh, I don't know where that where I don't know where we ultimately go. I don't know, but the fact that we have this many folks in here that enjoy this show on a night in night out basis is genuinely appreciated by the two of us, and we will never not stop telling you that because it just seems like it's disingenuous not to tell you. So I'm going to do my best to keep capitalizing on these dunks. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm building in excuses right now. But I've had some pretty good dunks so far this season. If you stuck around long enough last year, you know that's not how it always goes. At some point, there's a dud. All I'm asking is for the same forgiveness that some of you have shown Ellie and the same forgiveness that I will continue to show Ellie. And I just want to say, I just want to say, and I want to get out in front of this. I never said that Ellie should be benched. I said he should just get taken out of the game and start the next night. I just want to get out ahead of that and say that for a fact. Now, I know some might not believe that, and that's okay. But that's what I believe. And you know what? I'll final parting thoughts because I've not been on these airwaves since the Ellie situation went down. In order for this team to do what they ultimately want to do, and for us as a city to get to enjoy what we ultimately want to get to, like it or not, Ellie Ellie De La Cruz has to be a part of it. There is no way around it. This infield depth is scary. So before you start trying to make something, uh, maybe make a what, what, what a mountain out of a, out of a molehill, I think is the term some people use. Let's just pump the brakes a little bit and realize. That, we need this guy. You can be frustrated. By all means, I was. All you got to do is go back on Dex.com and you'll see. I was not a happy camper. But, I'm also not unrealistic. At least I don't think I am. And Ellie De La Cruz is a big leaguer. He'll stay in the big leagues. And he needs to continue to help this team win. And now is a time for the outro. And it's time for me to try to do a dunk. Just want to say one last time, thank you for watching the show. If you've not already, like the stream, share it, notify somebody, hit the notification bell. I'm going to try to make you proud. I just want you to remember, no matter what, go Reds. We'll see you Friday.